In this episode, we bring in the necessary parts to get us really close to wrapping up the IV Maxim. Guys, it is Monday, and I uh, hope you enjoyed the last episode. I know we're stringing out this axle project probably a little longer than I'd like, but I wanted to show you the parts that I teased about in the last episode. First off, we have the knuckle, if you will, or I don't really know what you'd call this, because I keep wanting to call this a spindle, but it's really not. It's kind of your control arm, upper and lowers. And while this is a fairly simple part to probably make on my own, um, I'm actually glad I paid for these because these came out really nice. Uh, BMI carts is where I got these from. I think each of these were only $7.50 each and it just uh, seems to be a real quality part. And they're gonna made up real nice to the I-beam. I mean, I couldn't be any happier. You can just look at dimensionally how well uh, those two line up. So there's that. The second or really second and third parts are new two-piece wheels that are going to replace the broken fronts and an associated hub assembly. So uh, we'll get these put together here in a GIF. Okay, now supposedly uh, these new ones were going to be a little bit smaller. I had calculated when I put a tape to the to the rim based on uh, the dimensions they gave on these guys online. These were supposed to be narrower by like a quarter of an inch, but really, I mean, I'm only seeing like a sixteenth of an inch lip, so that's good. That's real good. But let's get these on. Let's get these on the tire. There we go. We have a new new wheel now. I'll be honest, I'm not super enthused about how far out the hub comes and we have another clearance issue um, because of the size of these hubs. I'll show you in a bit. The primary reason is, you know, I was wanting to do hub caps and that's going to put these way out here. Um, now I suppose, yeah, I mean either way I go. I mean, this wants to be the inside of the wheel. Um, so, so I'm not super enthused about that. And then obviously into the finish, this is all, the only finish they had, um, but I'll probably scuff them up and paint them something to, and paint the last one. So you guys leave a comment below. Let me know what you think color wise. Should I go back to a yellow like this um, or should I do something else? I'm thinking flat white uh, for the wheels, but Okay, so we still have my old axle in the vise and uh, have every, all the linkage still connected, but I did take out the bolts uh, below. You can see with my new, uh, again, I guess I'm calling this a control arm. The old one fits. So I think I'm going to, I'm really tempted to reuse these guys. However, 
That brings us to the other clearance issue I was talking to you guys about. Okay, so if I am to reuse this thing, uh, this guy is too too shallow for the new hub. Uh, I forget what the measurement is. I think this is somewhere close to like a three inch total throw. And it just doesn't quite fit. Guys, it is Wednesday and it's beautiful. What I've done is I've leveled out my welding table. You may have noticed in some videos in the past this thing likes to rock. So I've leveled it out. Drew center line both ways uh, at the middle of the table. I'm going to tack this thing to my table. I've got it set up. Thanks in part to this trusty uh, metal straight edge ruler Craig Porter gave me. Uh, so I'm going to tack this thing in place because I've got it. I've got it setting just about right. And um, that's going to allow me to, uh, to set up my C-clamps in, in place, use the angle finder, and we can give it the proper, proper angle. Alright, so I have the knuckle electrical taped in place to get my 10 degree caster. And uh, I'm going to tack, tack it in place real fast. So there you go, I got both knuckles as I'm calling them, tack welded in place. Uh, not sure if I'm going to TIG weld those all the way or I might bust out the stick welder. You can see there's a pretty sizable gap here, I think uh, by a nice uh, 330 seconds rod might uh, close that up pretty well. but. Uh, you can also see where I've practiced with the uh, spherical deburring tool, and uh, that's turning out well. But I'll get you a full shot of me doing the rest of them later. Sort of force myself to stop because uh, I want to mark a center line again because I'm afraid like uh, it'll get off and track like this one further that way then. And the rest of them, you know, I want this to look very repetitive. So. Anyway, um, yeah, lesson learned uh, on the angle finder. I had it, you know, the little digital end up on, on this leg. TIG welder got too close to that and added some some heat, turned some things black. Uh, I was worried I ruined it, but uh, luckily I still have a little um, plastic film that I could pull off the digital visual gauge and um, anyway but uh, yeah there you go I just now have to grind it
Okay guys, it is a Sunday. I'm trying to get this video edited and wrapped up here real fast. Of course, because my K-State Wildcats are gonna take on the 16 seed. Um, I guess by the time this goes up, I won't know the outcome of that game. So you guys might be laughing at me as you're watching this if we lose, or you might just be like, yeah, okay, whatever. Uh, if we win, <laughs> like we're supposed to, 16 seed. What a story you and uh, UMBC is. There we go. Um, but I did get the uh, the axle all done yesterday. Uh, didn't really get to work on much here today. Uh, but just wanted to close down this episode. Let's see if we can grab it. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw. Uh, we got all of the spot welds cleaned up. I think it turned out pretty good. Not super perfect, but uh, I think I am gonna end up painting this guy. Uh, and then I'm gonna leave the uh, the ground out areas silver, or raw metal. But just wanted to close out the episode, remind you guys, if you want a Pistons t-shirt, link in the description below to my Spreadshirt store. Um, but that's gonna do it for this episode, and until next time, peace out.